Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. That makes him the only savior of the world because all the rest were not. All the great leaders were born of a mom and dad, but he was born of a virgin. He was God in the flesh. He was uh, completely perfect. He walked a perfect life, sinless life, because he was God in the flesh. He died on the cross, shed his blood, to buy us back from the devil, wash our sins away. He rose from that grave alive and well and is the right hand of the throne of God. And he sent the Holy Spirit for us to live with. And I'll be sharing that in the coming days, what, what the Holy Spirit is doing in us. But he's coming back again soon. You be prepared because it's soon to come. If I read on all of Matthew 24 where he talked about all these beginnings of sorrows, I'm not going to take time today, but they've all come to pass. But then he ended up saying he endures to the end. He'll be saved. So I'm going to teach you how to endure, how to make it, and giving you God's thoughts. Yeah, I could get up and walk pace back and forth and shout and holler and really get you all excited. Uh, that's the work of evangelists. But then when you go home, two weeks later, you may not remember everything he said, but you had a good time. But God called me to be a teacher, to teach you the Word of God, to sit here quietly with you so that you can listen to what I have to say and I can take the Word and make it alive. So I'm a teacher of the Word because God taught me the Word. I've, I've studied under Him for years and years. So I've studied this Word and I learned a lot from it. I told you last week how I'm survived through what I've gone through just in the last six months by taking and doing what I'm teaching you. It works. I've stayed healthy. It's worked. I'm going to talk again about God's thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Isn't that wonderful? God thinks. I explained last week. God thinks. Satan thinks and reasons. I went through all that. Evil spirits think and have a will. I gave all that last week. If you didn't miss that, you can maybe go to the archives and look it up. But they all think just like us. They're a spirit world that we don't see, but they think just like us. We've been created in the likeness of, of God. So we have given the reason that he gave us a brain and to think was there was, a, there was a reason for it. He had a plan for it to give us an abundant life in it. He designed our body, which we'll explain today. He, he gave us our body and our mind. He created it, and we have it. And right now, as I said last week, and I'm really adamant on this, uh, to try the spirits, I want to give you First John chapter 4. I want to read it in the Word, starting with verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. He didn't say don't believe everybody. He said don't believe every spirit. I talked to you that there's doctrines of demons going out in the last day, and it's not just in the church, but it's in our schools, it's in our media, it's, uh, it's everywhere. You have to be very careful what you're listening to. You have to know the difference because there's doctrines of demons that go against this because what they're trying to do is get into your mind. I was in, for years, I was in motivation for a large corporation at seven states training people. And as I studied and learned, there's a lot of motivation going on to get you to change your thinking. And uh, so I don't use all of that anymore. Uh, I could give you some that... you. You probably didn't know that you're being uh, motivated by the wrong things. Uh, this is like an example. They used to say, 
uh, our, our, our lipstick gives you, or our toothpaste gives you sex appeal. <laughs> well, the toothpaste didn't do that, but you sure bought it because you thought it did. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they're of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the church. No, he didn't say that. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. Thereafter, our, our colleges today, the voices of what they're teaching, doctrines of demons, they're trying to get our kids away from serving Jesus Christ. They're trying to confuse their minds. Their doctrines of demons going on in our, in our, while they're teaching in our school, little kids trying to tell them that they don't know whether they're a man or woman or you know, if they're both or what. That, that's doctrines of demons. Demons telling you it's okay to commit abortion. I mean, there's doctrines of demons going everywhere. It's not just in the church. I hope it isn't all in the church. Then he says, hereby you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherein you have heard that it should come and is now already in the church. Again, he doesn't say that. It's now already in the world. We're being bombarded right now by all kind of voices that you can't differentiate between, and you better differentiate between. I, I've, had, I've asked people, I one time, uh, the Mormon church people, ask them if Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. They'll tell you no. You can ask a lot of people. I've had people talk to me about the Lord, and I'll say, is Jesus Christ the Lord? Is he God in the flesh? Is he the word of God, born of a virgin? They'll say, no. Jehovah Witnesses won't. But it's in the church, but it's more rampant. It's more rampant in the, in the world today and what we're being taught. Uh, our government. Oh, I don't want to get into that. But listen, your government and some of the laws that they're making today are doctrines of demons. So we're not just working upon the church, we're working on the world. We're working on schools, we're working on the media, we're working on the government. You better know what's true, or you might be ended up taking a mark of a beast. So be careful, because you could end up, I'm going to show you in the coming weeks how to, how to say, well, that stress itself, which is trouble in the mind, produces more cancer than genetics of where you just your, your genetics to have. I said it produces way more. I can tell what I'm thinking because what I'm thinking will produce an emotion. If you want to know what you're thinking, check your emotions. Now, I'm not going to say all depression, all anxiety, all fear can just go away with changing thinking, but I can tell you the majority of it can. In fact, a major majority of it can. Very little of it is, is it could be from a fall and you had a brain injury or something like that. That's different. But just normal people with normal thinking, I can probably be, when I get through with this, You'll probably change your health and your life. Your thoughts produce an emotion. And that, in return, produces a decision that you're going to make. And then that, in turn, will produce an action that you take. So when you think a thought, and you let that thought work in you, and I'm going to give you next week, you're going to want to know this. What, hap what happens to the thought? Is it, is, it a, is it alive? Yes, your thoughts are alive. But is a thought running through my head? No, it's chemicals running through your head. It gets, it gets locked up into a chemical. You're, you're, 
I can, I can tell you to tell me in your house, your front window, is it a big window or is it a little window in the front of your home that you look out? And does it have drapes? And you know what? If you're not at your house, you can tell me because you go in your mind and you can see it. You see, I'm, I've got some things to share that are pretty, that are not talked about, but it's change, life changing. You can see that you can say, oh, I have a big window and, and I have some beige drapes hanging on it. So you, you could see that. I could say, well, how many windows are in the, in the, in the living room? And you go in your mind and you'll say, one, two, three, you go around the room. I'm going to change you. God is going to change everything about you. Everything that happens to you, I will go into next week. What happens when that thought goes into your brain and is stored? You will be amazed. I've told you at the beginning of all this that when you know what I know and I teach you from the Word that you will not sin. You won't even want to sin because you'll know what it's doing to you. And if you sin, you'll repent real quick. And a lot of times they, they scare us into stopping sin and that doesn't work very long. Because when the fear's over, then you go back into it. Uh, a lot of people say that alcoholics, and I worked for years with them, will tell you that's a gene in their body. Well, I'm going to show you your thoughts can change the gene. <laughs> if uh, I tell people if uh, you go into AA can stop you from drinking, uh, then have a, have a cancer AA, and if the right go to it, and then you won't have cancer anymore. Now I'm going to tell you how to stay well. God designed you to stay well. He wants more than anything you to be well. You understand? He doesn't want you depressed. Can you get out of depression? Absolutely you can. Can you get out of fear? Oh, I had fears when I was younger. I mean, they were overwhelming to me. I mean, you could give me, uh, they used to give you like seven signs that you might have cancer. And I could read that. And when I was done reading it, I had all seven signs. <laughs> uh, fear has a, plays a real trick on your mind. You can be free. The Bible says God didn't give you a spirit a fear, but of love, a, but a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. So you want to stick with me. I know what I'm talking about. I can really help you. I can really change what you're thinking. And I offered my book, Immune System for Defeat. I'll give it to you. All you have to do is write in. But if you support the ministry, I'll also help you and uh, I will give some of it to WTJR. God bless you. I hope that when you listen to this, I hope I'm helping you. And if I have, if you write in or, or get a hold of us and let us know that I'm helping you. Don't miss next week. I'll guarantee you. You want to mark that down. You don't want to miss that. That's going to bring you health. Love you. I pray for you. I want God's best for you. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to me and to you. God bless you.